Now the figures are going to appear in the results section. So the figure legends are part of the results section. One thing to keep in mind is that figures and tables should be able to stand on their own. In other words, a reader should be able to just open the paper and look at a figure and its legend and be able to understand what you did, how you did it, and what it means. So you need to have a lot of information in the figure legend to accomplish this important task. So the parts of the figure legends that you need to have are a brief title, a description of the figure content, the approaches you took to generate the data in those results, definitions of symbols and line or bar patterns, abbreviations that were not defined earlier in the legend, and for graphs, statistical information. For example, what do the error bars represent? Are they standard deviation? Are they standard error? What do the asterisks represent? Are they a certain p-value threshold. Let's take a look at an example. So we have this figure in uh, a results section, and we have this figure legend that says, uh, figure one, cucumber roots do not respond to iron supply in alkaline nutrient solution, even though they are chlorotic. Panel A, plants in each treatment. Panel B, chlorophyll level. Panel C, ferric chelate reductase. The question is, is this figure legend adequate? Does it have all the information that I just told you needs to be in a figure legend? Clearly the answer is no. This figure legend is not adequate. It does not contain all of the information. What was the actual figure legend for this figure? And you see it here. Now I'm not going to read this entire thing to you. So why don't you go ahead and pause the video and read this figure legend and think about does it contain all of that information that I told you should be contained in a figure legend. A little bit more about figure legends. First of all, as I just mentioned, remember that figure legends are in the results section. So write them as you would write results. Point number two, with that in mind, begin with a caption that is a statement or sentence that describes the contents of the figure. Do not caption it with a conclusion about what the results mean. Why not? Because that is discussion material. Interpreting what the results mean in the context of the research question belongs in the discussion. The figure legend is in the results. So don't lead the reader to making a certain conclusion. Give them the opportunity to study the figure or table and come to their own conclusion. Then when you get to the discussion section, you can tell them your conclusion about those results. But don't do it here. Let's look at some examples. Now it's time for the action list for this week. First, I want you to revise and finish your figures and tables. So the figures and tables are going to be the heart of the results section. So now is the time to go ahead and finish those. Next, I want you to write the figure captions. So a one sentence description of what's in the figure. And then next, I want you to go ahead and write the complete figure legend. So look back to the slide where I showed you all of the parts that need to be in a figure legend and make sure you include all of that information. Next, I would like you to print each figure on one page, one piece of paper, and measure it with a ruler and make sure that the width of your figure matches with the column width in your target journal and then resize it as necessary. Now it's important to do this at this stage before you submit the paper because a lot of journals will publish your figure at the exact size at which you submitted it. So if it's a little bit wider than a column width, they'll publish it taking up two columns and it just doesn't look right on the paper. And also some journals will shrink it to fit the column width. And if they shrink your figure, it might not read very well at that point. So this is a good time to print it and make sure that you can still see all the symbols, that they're large enough, that all of the letters and fonts are large enough when it's printed at column width. Next, I want you to draw on your figures. You're going to draw trend lines, circle important data points, and just kind of figure out what it is that you are seeing that allows you to interpret 
that result. So what is it that you want to help your readers see in that figure? What is the important thing to describe? So just mark that up on the figure itself and that's going to help you when you get to typing up the results. Next, on the printed figures, write down the key points you need to make. So you might have one key point from the figure or you might have four or five key points that need to come out of that figure. Go ahead and jot these down with pencil and paper onto the figures that you have printed out. Next, decide the order that you're going to present the figures. And now you're ready to write a results paragraph for each figure using the repeating pattern. And once you have all of these results paragraphs written, you've got a full first draft of the results section. Okay, there was a lot of information there in that lecture. The results seem like they're a straightforward section, but they are pretty tricky to do well. So let's look back at our learning outcomes and make sure that you can do each of these learning outcomes before you move on to the next lesson. Okay, learning outcome one is to explain the results of your study without repeating materials and methods. Number two is explain the results of your study without presenting discussion material, including in the figure legends. Number three is explain the results of your study without repeating the underlying data. So remember, data do not equal results. The next one is refer to the figures and tables rather than announcing them. So skillfully incorporate that reference to the figure in results sentences, not in announcement sentences. Write appropriate figure legends for a results section. And finally, avoid the common problems of the results section. All right, so this is another week where you have a lot of work to do, but I have faith that you can do it. So get out there and write this results section. And as you do it, happy writing.